Hi, and welcome to episode 15 of Techno Crime Fighters Forum. Uh, my name's Paul Marco, and with me already is uh, Dr. Melson Black and Karen Melton Stewart. Uh, what we wanted to start off today with is Millicent has been having some interactions with uh, a state senator, as I understand it, and some other people. So she's going to go over what she went to the, went through this week and as an ongoing story, and then we'll get in to other topics as they come up. So, Millicent, would you like to start off by telling us what's going on with you? Good morning. Good morning. I continue to be assaulted by a person that at least identifies himself as someone that I can um, that I've been in a personal relationship with, who is indeed retired Air Force. Um, and this morning I was awakened from an electronic dream. We've learned to identify the electronic dreams because normal REM starts at about 90 minutes after we go to sleep. And these electronic dreams tend to start almost immediately uh, within, within five to 30 minutes after we go to sleep, which is not time for a normal person to get into the REM state. Uh, Dr. Ben Kalatsen told me that these dreams are actually for programming purposes. So when I was awakened this morning, and every time I'm awakened from a dream, the person talking to me is always in the voice of uh, Randall Webster. And I'll just call his name and because I tell the police department, if it isn't him, it's someone using his voice, or it could be computer generated. However, this is the person whose voice, uh, the only person whose voice I've heard since 2008, actually uh, late 2007. So this morning I wrote the police department again about the interference. I've also continued to have documented interferences with the static makers. The static makers are being used to break up the brain entrainment. So now tell me who wants to stop my brain from becoming my own again? Why would someone go to the trouble of draining batteries from static makers to stop my brain from hearing just static rather than the Morse code, which was discovered by an audiologist on May the 5th. A couple of weeks ago, I contacted a state senator's office and asked for help, asked if they could get the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation involved. Um, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigation, are at the, you know, disclosure, uh, dis well, they're at the use of our local police department. When I contacted them in 2011, they both said they could get involved with the invitation of the police department. It's a jurisdictional issue. So when I sent a copy of my email on yesterday to that state senator, and that is uh, Senator Kelsey, Brian Kelsey, he did email me back from his own personal computer and said that someone in his office is trying to work with the TBI concerning my, my concerns. So this morning in my email, I reminded my local police department that I've already advised them that an unidentified object has been removed from my body. It is in the custody of the surgeon. And I have asked them in the past to please help me get that, uh, that object investigated. They have ignored my pleas as well. Now, two weeks ago, almost three weeks ago now, I sent a certified mail to the city manager, Tony Massey, and to the vice mayor, Krista Martin, asking if they would initiate an internal review of the local police department based on my continued, not just contacts with them, but also providing evidence and witnesses of the ongoing stalking, cyber stalking, and cyber hacking. Uh, as of yet, I have not received any response from them. Now, I've had some, some pretty good success, at, at least at getting the state and even federal um, legislators involved. In 2011, a state representative here did indeed order the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation to investigate my, my complaint. However, when they contacted the local police department, which is their usual first line of contact, they were told that there were no, pro no problems with my complaints, that they were not founded. This was 2011, and that representative, um, my brain is being slowed down. Oh my goodness. Anyway, 
I, I'll, I'll get, I'll remember his name and I'll tell you what his name was. But he was very kind and he tried twice uh, to help me in that matter. Then in 2014, when I moved to Dayton, Ohio, Representative, United States Representative Mike Turner did get involved. His office helped me uh, write a letter to the Air Force and told me, you know, she kind of helped me to draft it, gave me the, the uh, what was reasonable for me to ask them to ask, and that was that my body and the, ch and the body of my children would be scanned, that any objects found there would be removed, that there would be an investigation into the person that I have uh, had continued personal stalking from. Uh, Representative Turner's office responded that they did not get a response at all from the Air Force. Then in 2012, I did uh, contact Arnold Air Force Base and was told by investigator, well, actually it's called Special Agent Jeffrey Stoddard, that that, uh, that person is retired and no longer a part of the Department of Defense. He said at that time, it is a civil matter. Now, what I was told by the Artemis Center in Dayton, Ohio, is because so many military veterans are part of the local police department forces, that they are very slow to investigate each other. A Navy chaplain told me that it's called fraternization. So we do indeed have, I have a history with even my state and federal representatives trying to help me to get my situation investigated. The problem that I constantly run into is the local police departments telling them either that, that there's mental illness in my background or that my complaints are unfounded. Now, tell me why they would not contact me and ask me who is this surgeon, where is she located, and how can we contact her? Because again, I have reported that an object has been removed from my body by a surgeon and that she indeed doesn't identify it as something that is, should not be there. So that's kind of where I've been. It seems that almost every morning I get up contacting the police department and sending them evidence and witnesses uh, one thing I sent them on Monday morning was a note that was written by a witness who indeed tried my static makers itself over the weekend, and they were not working. Yesterday afternoon, I was having lunch with a different person who also tried them, and she could not hear them. So, again, why does someone not want my brain free? What is the message of the Morse code that's being sent to my brain on a continuous basis? I was looking over a biofeedback report this morning that I had early in June, and it states over and over and over that I have nervous system interference, that there are heavy metals in my body, that harmful energies like microwave and x-rays are, are, were found at that time. Again, it's obvious that someone is doing things to me. It's obvious that I am not having mental illness, I'm not delusional, I'm not dissociative, I'm not hallucinating. Um, the fact that there actually is a surgeon, I have her bill, I have my proof of payment, I have her estimate of actually removing four objects from my body that she considered some that she could get to, and she also identified objects that she thought she could not get to without me being in a hospital surgical unit. So you see, we are indeed standing up for ourselves. I have been standing up for myself with proof from United States and the state of Tennessee representatives trying to help me since 2011. So even that's been six years ago with no results or with little results. However, I keep going because I don't know which time someone's help is going to be the breakthrough that I need. That's kind of it. This, this uh, oh. I'm Millicent. Uh, this uh, Brian Kelsey, is he a state representative? He is in Tennessee, yes, state representative. He's actually the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. Okay, and this is in Tennessee? That's correct. Okay, anybody that's watching from Tennessee should write this guy, Brian Kelsey, tell him to get on the stick and start investigating this case. It's very important. When you contact the police, are you con is it a state? Is it state police, city police, or county sheriffs? This is the city police. The chief of police's name is Troy Potts. The uh, director of the investigative unit, his name is also a, a, chief, a Captain Potts. Um, I have also been constantly 
carbon copying those emails to the vice mayor of the city of Columbia. Her name is Dr. Krista Martin. Dr. Martin is an African American. Um, and then also I've been copying lately their city manager whose name is uh, Tony Massey. When I met with them in May of last year and described the things that have been happening to me, Mr. Massey looked at, at Chief Potts and said racketeering. Racketeering is indeed human trafficking in every book in the land. Right. And it's done by the uh, Air Force in your case, and it's done by generally the CIA, FBI, NSA, and all the other alphabet agents. That's great. Correct. Well, uh, tell me a little bit more about the dream thing. When we started off, you said that you could tell they were manipulate, manipulating your dreams because they started too early. I, I'm, I generally about 2 a.m. I'm started kept awake or awakened every two hours. So at 4.44, I was awakened and going back to sleep. I was then reawakened at about 5.55, which is really about an hour and what, 11 minutes away from a dream. I don't know how long I'd been in that dream. It was very weird. I usually don't remember what the contents are. But Dr. Benjamin Colossin told me that they're generally um, programming in nature. When I was awakened, though, I heard the voice of Randall Webster, and he was talking to me about the dream. He said he had sent that dream so that he could start suspicion again in the minds of the people in the community, and obviously Mr. Kelsey, because he was overseeing me as I wrote that email. In fact, when I sent it to you guys, the email had about four or five attachments. And I think when you got your copies, it maybe only had one attachment, and that would have been his picture. And I sent the picture so that you could see that the wings on his jacket, which proves that he is indeed an, air, an airman. And as an airman, they are um, generally, according to my investigation, chipped for purposes of being able to communicate if they were shot down in enemy territory. Uh, survival training also goes with that uh, that position, and that survival training is nothing less than the SEER torture training that has been very much in the news, both on Capitol Hill as well as in the in the news, uh, from because of the abusive tactics that are used with um, prisoners of war in places like Afghanistan, Guantanamo, Iraq. That's right. I, You're talking about SEER training, right? You're talking about the Fairfield um, Air Force Base training. Right. I'm talking about SEER training. However, the dream programming appears to be part of what's called the MK Ultra or the Monarch. You got a really training. bad connection. Say that again, Paul. Well, we were just we lost you for about uh, say a minute. Oh, really? Right, and I was. Uh, I was saying that uh, we must be over the target because we're really getting interference. Um, they don't yeah. want this out. And it's, a, it's always a good sign when they try to prevent us, us communicating something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so they do, use, they do use dreams to try to reprogram you. And uh, you're publishing a picture, or uh, you sent us at least a picture of your perp. And, uh, we know that he's in the Air Force, he's an airman, he's had the SERE training, and uh, he's the one who's tormenting you right now and threatening you. I, I, I draw my conclusion from the fact that he does indeed approach me in public even now in a stalking manner. I have had him in, in a court of law with a temporary order of protection. Um, there were multiple times that he visited my home prior to the high-tech torture starting and even for over a year after the high-tech torture started. Now he is a 26-year veteran of the Air Force. He retired, um, well, 10 years ago this year, he retired and I have been personally stalked and that's physically stalked as well as electronically harassed ever since. Wow. Well, we just got news from our... Uh, they still heard you. They, the uh, chat room heard you loud and clear all through the time we were cut off so everything went fine so that's well good 
he certainly is behaving in a disgraceful manner in terms of the Air Force. If I had a history uh, with the Air Force, and I have friends that, that are with the Air Force, uh, I would certainly be ashamed of what they're doing and uh, try to expose it in the name of this branch of the service, which has been torturing you for 27 years now, right, Millicent? I can prove it's been 27 years since I first received communication in words that this man uh, had published in a newspaper article in 2013. Okay, now, let me also put on notice all the people that we've mentioned this morning, this Brian Kelsey person, uh, uh, Troy Potts, the other Captain Potts, that sounds a little uh, incestuous right there, Dr. Crystal, uh, you're, you're the- Mr. Martin. Martin, yeah. Those are all, if they don't investigate this, we have clear cut evidence, we have uh, testimonies, we have evidence, we have even an actual object that's come out. Unless they investigate it, we have to assume that they're covering up. Uh, and they, in the United States, they call it aiding and abetting. And I think aiding and abetting carries the same penalty as the actual crime. If, if yes, I and I, I also think, Paul, it's time, and I was speaking to Millicent earlier about this, it's time for us to name these parties in print and online, to start naming people who are involved and also who are informed but who do not take action. You know, because that's the function of the police department, is it not? When informed about cyber hacking, for instance which Millicent has indeed informed in relation to her um, static makers in her year and her telephone, her cell phone interference issues. So she's informed them about it. Those are cyber hacking issues. And apparently AT&T got back to her and said, there is a cyber hacking team with your police department. They are the ones who are responsible and who should be informed. So therefore, she informs the police department and then the police department does not respond or responds erratically you know, suggesting that there really is no um, no substance to this claim, which is which is not exactly what one would hope for from an organization of people who are supposedly set up to protect the citizenry, right? So that kind of thing needs to be reported. And I was thinking, I'm of course a little bit overstretched in terms of the kind of reporting that I'm doing week to week, but I do want to cover this particular story from Millicent you know, about reporting to the police and not getting an adequate response. Right. Right. The police department are basically there to protect the moneyed interest of the people that are moneyed. And the laws are there to protect the moneyed people. Uh, I don't think there's anything in any police department's charter that protects citizens. Now, they and that they're all under the obligation to uh, prosecute crimes against humanity. And this is indeed a crime against humanity. I mean, there's no, there's no way about it. Yes, but and I think, I, see, that is, that's my point of view. That's what I'm thinking is, it's like we're all just waking up now to this understanding that the police are not here for us. Right. The security agencies are not here for us. The intelligence agencies are not here for us. They're here for the bankers, they're here for the cabal, they're here for the moneyed interests, and um, they're here for the multinationals. You know, they're protecting somebody else's interests. But who is being warred against in the process? It's you and I. It's the normal, everyday person on the ground, you know? We are literally being assaulted by this very same faction. Well, hello, we need to speak up, speak out, and, and report our experiences. We need to start putting names to it and start reporting openly, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. I've always and been. Things, I'm yeah. sorry, Paul. Are you in a county? I'm in Maury County. M A U R Y, Maury County. And one Maury, of the things. That, right. Maury, Maury County has a sheriff, and he's an elected official, probably, the way most counties work. Get him involved. Tell him to investigate the police department. If he doesn't expose him, he's a politician. So, okay, yes, he is indeed, and he's he is elected. So yes, that that's a good idea. 
I had not contacted him yet because, you know, the word on the street is that the sheriff's department actually runs the mind control operations in the counties. <laughs> Perfect. That's all. <laughs> Get his name on this on this list of, of perpetrators and aiders and abettors of perpetrators. And I wonder when the election's coming up. This would be a great thing to uh, be involved in his election campaign. Actually, probably what you should do is run against him. Oh, well, I've already decided that, that I'm going to. Well, I have. I've decided that I'm going to. Um, Wonderful. People are suffering in this county and in counties all around these United States. They have nowhere to go because they have no one that identifies with them. So far, I only know one woman who has gotten some cooperation, and her name is Amy Anderson. She lives in Richmond, California. Amy's uh, city councilwoman, Javanka Beckles, was the one that sponsored the Space Preservation Act for their town, and their town did pass that bill, and that Space Preservation Act forbids the use of space-based weapons over that city. Now, it may not stop them, and all of the police officers are not on board with the, uh, with the passing of that, of that resolution, but it is in place. It did happen, and it happened because a city council person believed the words of a victim, and she went to her assistance. So it's important that we don't just sit down and sit back some people just want to, they just want to shield themselves and be quiet. That's not enough for me. I've got the, the words of someone in my head saying that he likes hurting women and girls. I have two daughters and a granddaughter. I have a mother that I see being assaulted and being wounded. I cared for my dad who was murdered as I cared for him. That should not happen. And I, I've already given you all names of multiple family members who dropped dead, I believe, from the death ray. Medusa can also be used to cause someone to drop dead or have a heart attack. So I'm not talking from someone else's experiences. I'm talking from my own. I'm talking from a person, as a person who has suffered violent assaults to my body, including the infusion of heavy metals and, and, and other chemical toxicities for at least 14 years. And that's just since the was announced. But I also have evidence of a NASA Iconis satellite that was launched by Lockheed Martin over my home just six months prior to the start of the high-tech torture. Uh, I, I read something just over the weekend that said the, com the Morse code communications person is responsible for satellite linking. And Randall Webster was in and out of my home consistently between uh, 2001 and 2004. And he was there just two days after that iconic satellite was spotted over my home in January 2003. May just be circumstantial, may be incidental, but I still believe he has something to do with this torture. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, you hear his voice. Absolutely, nonstop. He's the and, one that threatens. He's the one that promises to do these things here. And there's a connection as well between the voice in her head and the actual person that she knows and that she sees in church, correct, Millicent? Because you have relayed to me and Catherine at one point that. Um, the voice in your head, which of course could be voice morphing technology, which exists currently with the military, um, that voice can indeed be related to the person you know in reality, because this person in, in your head has made reference to this person's, you know, the outside person's actual relatives, correct? Exactly. He calls his sister's name, he's called his mother's name, he calls his grandmother's name all the time. Significant about his grandmother's name is in 2013, my Yahoo account was taken over and it was taken over the very night that I had made contact with Mark Phillips. Mark Phillips is the person who has helped uh, Kathy O'Brien get free of the mind control programming, of the Monarch programming. When I uh, got up the next morning, I actually got a phone call from someone who said they received a, an email asking 
for ten thousand dollars and saying that I was stuck in an, in another country and I needed them to help me get home. And she says, "Now I just talked to you last night. When did you go there?" And I said, "You know, I'm not there." But what had happened was this guy had actually taken over my Yahoo account, and I have never been able to get back to that account since then. But when I called Yahoo customer service, I was told he's the first thing the customer service rep said was, "He has put his password." In front of yours, and that's exactly what he said. He has put his password in front of yours. The next thing he said was, and he's changed the secret code. So he told me what the secret codes changed was, and it was this guy's grandmother's name. That was the secret code. Now, in 2011, I started calling uh, Military One Source, and this the. the Second person I talked to when I was calling military one source, I was telling them what was happening. You know what the guy said? He said to the person sitting beside him, it's the sergeant. Wow. wow. And you, you, may want to spell out, you may want to spell out what military one is. It's, um, it's sort of um, an organization or a website for the, for the community, the military community, right? Exactly. I, Millicent, I think that... Uh, You've got them dead to rights. You've got physical evidence, written evidence. You've got 27 years of documentation. They can't touch you. If they open this case, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's uh, atomic. It's, it's all blown everything wide open. That's why everybody that we name, I think it's going to scatter like a bunch of, uh, I don't know, ants uh, after they find us out. By the way, I need to mention this. Somebody on the... Uh, and the chat has informed us that we're also being live streamed on a site run by a guy named Pancho Pete. And uh, they, whatever, whatever if, it, if they want to help, whatever. But they would like us to introduce ourselves uh, and say a little bit, just, just a few minutes, so that those people that are new to this through Pancho Pete can get to know us. Um, well, why don't I just do it faster? Uh, first of all, we have Dr. Millicent Black. Now, Dr. Millicent Black is, is a pastor, and uh, she's been a targeted individual for uh, 27 years, we know, uh, and nothing's letting up. Everything's getting worse, and she comes up with things every week that they're doing. We know who's her, who her perpetrator is. We know the organization that's doing it. And it's just a matter of getting uh, uh, responsible military, not military, uh, responsible, I don't know what you call them, uh, police. Uh, Civil servant is what it's supposed to be. Yeah, Civil somebody. Service. Right, to, to, to persecute it. Uh, it's an open and shut case as far as I'm concerned, although I'm not a lawyer. Uh, next, we have uh, Karen Millicent, uh, Karen Melton Stewart. And uh, she's an NSA whistleblower, also a TI, because she's a whistleblower. And uh, she's been in the program, what, for five years or so, right, uh, Karen? Well, it's a little on and off. I would say that the electronic harassment started about 20 months ago, but the stalking harassment began about 2006. Oh, that's a long time, 11 years. Oh my God. Okay. Paul's feed is sort of frozen, at least at my end. Dr. Marco, we're not hearing you, at least I'm not. Yeah, it's frozen at my end too. How about you, Millicent? Can you hear? Not him, I can hear everyone else. Okay. Um, I think Catherine just joined us. Um, yes, hello. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Sorry, so sorry. I was I was following the conversation. I um I my phone just dropped out. I'm just calling in from a phone, so um unfortunately I can't stream the video because it's um you know not enough bandwidth. I'm just using my phone at the moment. I um sorry, I was just following the conversation earlier and um can, can you just tell me because I, I just missed the last I think five minutes. Um because you were talking about um you know the attacks 
on, on Millicent. And um, I, the last thing I heard was that Romola said that we really should publicize the people who are involved. And I can't but agree because I'm of, of the opinion. I mean, what, what has delineated itself across the globe, and this is why Millicent cannot stop the targeting against herself, is um, that this is a global program. This has been signed off from the highest level. Um, Brian, you made comments about the fact that the UN decided in the 90s that um, we are to evolve to what he called a neuro society, and therefore, you know, some experimentation would be okay, you know. And um, we had this sort of comment already before. I think it was in the before, or was it just after the Second World War when communism was on the table? And communism was discussed in the UK, and one of these, you know, philosophers, so-called, made the comment of um, I can't remember who it was, but the comment was, "You can't make omelets without breaking eggs," okay. and that's the mindset of some people. You know, just need to have their skull cracked if necessary to just make bring about a new system. I okay. think that's exactly what we're seeing the rerun of. So we have a couple of senior psychopaths at the top who are hooked into this synthetic telepathy network, as I've heard from agents, you know, and they are communicating. And what this is, is they've got chips in their brains, they've got chips in their ears, they're connected to this AI-driven intercom, and they think they are gods. In actual fact, all of them are too flaming stupid to figure out that what they're actually doing is microwaving their brain, they're degrading their brain, and they've been given a bunch of fancy gimmicks by a cartel who wants to control them to the last detail and want to ensure that none of them cottons on to what the cartel is about to do next. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the thing. And, and, you know, hey, once this... Mm -hmm. hey, Catherine, we should resume this conversation, but just before you came on, we were having a bit of a technical glitch and Paul was off the air, but he was right in the middle of introducing all of us. Um, for uh, someone else who's also live streaming us, apparently. So maybe we should get back to that, continue the introduction, and then get back to the conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, hi. Catherine, we can't see you. Are you hiding? Um, no, I'm, I'm just... You don't have enough bandwidth. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm too long. Gotcha. We're being live streamed by another uh, channel. Mr. Pancho Mr. Pete is live streaming us, and I think they have 28 viewers. We have 54. So we're talking to a larger audience, and hopefully, uh, Mr. Pancho will uh, will spread this far and wide too. That's really great. Uh, so we had, the, the, well, the last time I was here, before we got kind of blocked out, we were finishing Millicent's story. I've introduced everybody to Pancho, Mr. Pancho, and uh, we're going to continue on with with that. Um, I think Paul? that we could go ahead. Well, I should just, <coughs> we, we got cut out when you started your introductions, and I think you had started to introduce Karen, and then your video feed and audio feed kind oh. of froze for us. Okay, so, so let me. Karen was was talking about her years of um, of uh, being in the program, and then I went on to Ramola D. Ramola D is a a famous writer and journalist, and we're very glad to have her because she helps us articulate and put in order and organize what's going on. She uh, got into program because she didn't like uh, paying a certain amount for her child's aftercare and wrote some letters to some prominent people. And, Just spoke uh, out, didn't even write letters. <laughs> yeah, she spoke out. and. Uh, then there's Catherine Horton. Uh, Dr. Catherine Horton is a particle physicist. Partic particle physicist. She used to work at CERN. And she was in the program because she uh, started following a high profile case in England and, uh, and got in the program that way. So here we are. We have everybody introduced. And uh, we're going to continue along the same lines that we were. Uh, Catherine, you were, you were saying something interesting when we were able to get back on. Do you want to continue what you were saying? Catherine. Yes, I think it's really important to realize because um, 
all of us, I mean, Karen tried to, um, you know, get out of the program. She has lawyers. I tried to go to the high court. Millicent um, tried to get a, an order of protection. And all of us have really tried everything to get out of this program, and we couldn't. And all of us have witnessed horrific corruption. And the, the corruption seems to be um, choreographed. It seems to be synchronized. It's identical across the globe, across two continents, certainly. And what that means is that, you know, this isn't a coincidence. This is a program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we have to understand, I think now the team has to up, we have to up our game. We have to understand the scale of this. And um, that will be a clue of what we have to do to stop it. Because everything we tried so far hasn't stopped it. Um, so I was, I was just pointing out that, um, I mean, look at us now. This is a world premiere. It's a world premiere because we have people being not just tortured, but mutilated and actually murdered live on camera. We have our live. We are being murdered by our own government institutions. We know who's doing it. We know exactly who's doing it. I know who's, who got me on the list. You know, Karen knows. Um, Millicent knows. Ramola knows kind of, roughly. And these people have usurped so much power they can literally not care one iota about the police or the judiciary because they have the ball in the bag. And that sort of situation um, we had before, certainly in Europe, and that was back in the 1930s. That was when Hitler came to power, and by the way, with a lot of money from Switzerland via the Anglo-Saxon banks, um, what they did is that they corrupted the entire police. So, you know, when people went and, and uh, rounded up, um, not just Jews, but also socialists, and they, they started rounding up random people. Back in the day, the police service was as developed as it was today, but nevertheless, the police did nothing. And that's because the police had been ahead of that, quietly replaced by corrupt individuals. The good guys were pushed out and creepingly corrupt individuals have been put in. And I would like to say that the same thing has happened now. Corrupt politicians were moved in, corrupt police officers into key positions. And Karen saw some of that when NSA was corrupted via NSA security, you know. But if you, if you wouldn't have the testimony of Karen, we wouldn't know to what extent um, the NSA is, is corrupted and how it came about. And I'm just saying the same thing must have happened in the FBI and not just in America. The same thing happened to the Metropolitan Police in London in Germany, in Switzerland, everywhere. Um, so this is a global program of deep capture that has been brought about to facilitate what we're seeing now. And so, Catherine, um, if you've read um, Dr. Eric Karlstrom's recent analysis, he talks about the CIA as being at the heart and center of all of this, starting from the Phoenix operations during the 70s, which were essentially counterinsurgency operations, whereby Vietnamese uh, civilians were pretty much assaulted during the 60s and 70s. Intellectuals, artists, anybody who spoke out was, you know, put on a terrorist list, put on a watch list, and then pretty much terrorized. And, um, and he also talks about the, uh, the CIA's secret team, how the uh, United States CIA has taken over the world a book by uh, Fletcher Prouty, who was a CIA insider, you know, an incredible book, um, which also talks about, which kind of reveals how the CIA infiltrated organizations around the world. There's been a lot of disclosure, which um, Dr. Carlstrom points to. One of them is from another CIA insider called John Stockwell, who's on record as saying that since the Second World War, about six million people have been killed in these terrorist counterinsurgency operation, um, you know, run by the CIA in quote unquote third world countries. Now I dislike that term third world intensely, but you know the countries that I'm speaking about. It's the countries outside the five eyes. It's the countries outside the Anglo-American axis, right? The colonized world, the previously colonized and exploited and well continuous, continued to be colonized world really. Although at this point, we're all colonized apparently. We're all colonized by the cabal. Uh, so, um, so the CIA apparently is at the heart of this, and I found this particular article absolutely incredible, and I would recommend it to everybody. 
And if you want, I can very briefly go to my um, sharing screen thing and show you the article, Shane, the name of the article, because I have it right here. Let me just share it for a minute. Uh, it's, um, the article is called Gang Stalking Equals CIA Counterinsurgency Operation. Notes from Proudies of Secret Team, the CIA and its allies in control of the United States and the world. But he quotes a couple, a couple of books in it. And one of the books, um, one of the other books he quotes is um, Doug Valentine's The CIA as Organized Crime. So literally, when you read this article and you read, um, you know, the analysis of these two books, you kind of get a real picture of, you know, you've talked before, Catherine, of one big intelligence agency running this. But it appears that it could very well be the CIA, you know, based um, on this analysis. And it's absolutely incredible. Uh, I was sort of reading it before we started, and I'm halfway through at this point. So I highly recommend everybody read it. Um, so literally, these operations, they are so-called peacetime operations. They are a civilian military operation. They've been run for seven decades. But they've been amped up currently with the use of newer weapons, the use of electronic weapons. Uh, covert stealth warfare, in other words, has been facilitated um, by the by these, um, you know, by this very same operation. So, Ramona, you know, I just you know what, over and over and over, especially in 2003 when the high tech torture started, people would tell me CIA, CIA, a cousin from California said CIA. Several people from Mount Pleasant would say CIA. So obviously, you know, the CIA has always been in charge of the behavior modification programs. Yes. And that's a, that includes the MK Ultra, MK Delta, M, you know, the. Um, Oh also, gosh. MK, Artichoke. Yeah. All of those. So yeah. it's a combination of everything they've run in the past and everything that they have been running apparently in other countries. And by the way, we all know that even though the church committee came out and tried to expose what the CIA was doing, they did a good job shredding evidence, hiding files, and refusing to say the truth of what they were really doing. And further, immediately after that, they went underground. And there have been other exposés since then, such as by Alex Constantine, um, the virtual government, where he has written extensively on how the, the, the very same behavior modification experiments have shown up now in cults around the country, have shown up in university research programs, and so forth. And, and this is, so this is really an extension. And now we are looking at a behemoth. We're looking at not just the CIA operating in isolation. It has taken over organizations, research organizations, research institutions, universities. In, in other words, it's back to MK Ultra with a bang, you know, and, and it's working with the DOD. So there's a lot of intermingling, a lot of interconnection. And um, it seems like many of us today working as analysts and researchers in this space are slowly teasing out the very many different and, you know, distinct connections between those very same behavior modification programs and chemical weapons and bioweapon, biowarfare programs and what's going on today that people are reporting, you know, with um, all the neurotech that's be that people are being assaulted with and also with uh, what uh, implants apparently are known as biological weapons. You know, so with all of that as well. The Jim Jones massacre was said to have been a CIA experiment. And also there is indeed the uh, class action lawsuit that is has been in the court, uh, hopefully it's still in the courts, that's ran for the Vietnam veterans by Morrison Forster, a law firm in San Francisco. It's the Vietnam veterans versus the DOD and the CIA. And they did have a really uh, startling victory in 2014, I believe, when the, the Supreme Court ordered the Department of Defense to release the medical documents to those Vietnam veterans. Now, the initial complaint include uh, chemical and biological weapons being used against those Vietnam veterans, but it also talks about MK Ultra, MK Delta, Artichoke, all of the other CIA experiments. They're all listed in that complaint, and that's an important thing for us. Um, 
Though I wanted to just tell you all again the name of that first uh, state Tennessee state representative who came to my assistance. His name was Representative John Tidwell. Um, the other thing I wanted to say while we're talking about police officers is in 2004, January 2004, I was stopped on the highway, and the guy asked for my license. He he went checked, came back, leaned down, and looked in my eyes, and he said, "We're not all bad, sweetie." I took that as uh, it really brought me a lot of comfort. Uh, not long after that, I met the federal investigator for the Census Bureau who talked to me frankly about what's going on. He said, I'm a Christian and I will not allow the government to make me lie for them. So over and over, I have also found good people just like those who have tried to help me in, in both the United States Senate uh, uh, legislature as well as in the state legislature. I do know that all the police officers are not bad. Uh, there was an investigator who who turned a street uh, supervisor who actually called and prayed with me one night. Um, so they're not all. I had two police officers. One was a sergeant in the Mount Pleasant Police Department who said to me, we want to investigate, but the chief won't let us. So you see, it's not all of them that are in agreement with this, just like they're not all bad. Karen was not bad. They're not all bad. Uh, we just have to pray for those that are good, that they are able to maintain and that they are in the right, you know, at the right time will come forward and begin to share the truth of what's really going on in the inside. Um, no, I think well, let me make this observation. I have been told by multiple people that, uh, and they didn't even know what they were telling me. I've been told by multiple people that the, they used to have a good sheriff in their county, but the sheriff died suddenly from a brain tumor. Well, how many sheriffs across the nation who were constitutional sheriffs and oath keepers, how many have suddenly died from brain tumors? I'd like to know, frankly. And then they're replaced by sycophants. We've had a couple of sheriff deputies die very suspiciously in the last two months, actually. One of them died of a traffic accident. He went over a bridge, and that bridge I'm sure he's driven week after week. Uh, the other one and that was the one who actually picked me up the night that the court ordered me to be examined at the hospital. He was very kind. He was a Christian. He talked about his Christian experiences. Um, and then the second one, I think, may have been his partner. But I do, I do know that they also are taken out, and they're taken out because they're good. So, ladies, I think, um, I'm not sure, can you hear me now? Yeah. We can okay, hear. I think, you know, because I think I can tell. everything everything you said is is totally to the point. It goes right to the heart of it. Because what you described with the sheriffs dying, these brain tumors, no, they are not coincidence. They are a program. And what this is that the program it, it has what I was trying to say earlier, it has already reached deep capture. And now the capture is going down to the county level. And the idea is to just replace the Good sheriffs, every last good sheriff has to be replaced or murdered to put in the new one. And the question is, what's the plan? And the plan is, as far as I can tell, to kick off World War III as a cover for big asset stripping in the US and also Europe. That's one of the things. So everything you guys are saying is true. And you know what? What you said is exactly the evidence we need to go after. You're cutting it out. Is that true with everybody else? Uh I don't know how the chance. We can't hear Catherine clearly. We can't hear Catherine clearly. Can you hear me? Just choppy. Yeah. <coughs> right, is it? Can you hear me now? Is this better? Yes. We Maybe. Can hear you. No, that's better. That is better. Yes. I think I I might be able to go closer to uh to the actual um Wi-Fi station. Um, I'll try again over here. So what I wanted to say is the following. Um, so what you what you described, um, the, the sheriff's dying, that's not a coincidence. It is deep capture extending down the local level. It's a program. It's a program of, of definite takeover. And, and if you want to see an example of it, exactly the same happened in the 1930s. For the Gestapo to start the killing round, they had to get rid of all the good police officers. It's exactly the same template run out. So at home I've got, uh, I've got a book about the, the, the history of a lot of where you live. 
made a few of German federal intelligence. The German federal intelligence led to the Pulach, and this is the next kind of um, part of the town right next to it. So we were talking a kilometer and a half away. So that was pretty much Nazi HQ, as far as I can tell. And what they did is they cleansed, they cleansed the entire town. They, they put all the charities together, they centrally controlled the charities. Um, they made sure that no one can actually get any help from the charities, which is exactly what we see today as well. You know, neither the ACLU, nor Human Rights Watch, nor any of these charities help us. That's because they've already been replaced at the leadership by agents. That's why. And we're seeing the same thing with the police. They are removing the good police officers. They are murdering them. And they're murdering them by modern means. But, um, and I, it's so important to raise this, because if we want to prove this in a court of law, we have to do exactly what you guys suggested. We have to go out and we have to look for the dead sheriffs. Because all these brain tumors, they, are, they, they will show up in a statistical analysis brain tumors have a certain probability and having so many sheriffs in a row develop brain tumors will show up we can and you know what i always say data analysis is our friend because whatever process there is data analysis will, will show when we combine data so we need to put out a call i think um for, for evidence you know for someone around and actually see if there were any say in the last 10 years what were the deaths of sheriffs because it's since 2001 that this really kicked off. So the last 10 or 17 years, you know, who, what, what sort of sheriffs died, you know? Pull a bit the local community because the local community know who the good guys are. They know, the system knows, you know? And I'm saying that what we're seeing is exactly a rerun of the 1930s. It's the same template that the cartel has played out in the 1930s to bring about World War II, which was also staged. And the way they will go about it is exactly like in the 1930s, which is putting all the charities together under central control, which I think these days is done by placing agents everywhere. And, you know, the police will be disabled by removing the, the good sheriffs. So that's one thing I wanted to say. The other thing that's also really important because, um, you know, you guys are in a sense right that it's the CIA. Yes, it's, it is the CIA doing it. But you're missing a piece. And that is that the CIA is not headquartered in the U.S. Remember, I think called CIA, uh, sorry, CIA Langley, right? Is that what it is, I think? I, I always forget, but I think it's CIA Langley. Well, Langley is the branch office. That's why they always say CIA Langley, because there's another CIA elsewhere. And there is a historian here in Switzerland called Sean Ross, and... Um, Sorry, he, uh, no, sorry, it's not even him. It's another one called David, ah, uh, David Taylor. I have to forget his name. Sorry, it's the combination of the information from these two people that gives you the clue of what we're actually dealing with. The, the CIA, even though, you know, a lot of the operations are in Langley, the CIA is not controlled from Langley. It is controlled from Switzerland. It's controlled from, you know, yeah. well, again, you know, you can control an organization from wherever, wherever you have a mobile phone. But traditionally, the, um, you know, the really big intelligence agency was located in Switzerland. And I tell you why. That's because in finance, you already know that there, there are no separate central banks. All the commercial banks and the central banks are part of the same conglomerate called the One Bank. And the One Bank is headquartered in Switzerland. It's the BIS, the Bank of International Settlement. I think the, um, you know, Ronald Bernard says, says as much, you know, he says the BIS is at the heart of it. Well, the process that led to the BIS becoming the, the one bank is identical to all the intelligence agencies morphing. And the biggest intelligence agency will, will just infiltrate and take over the other intelligence agencies bit by bit. And the oldest intelligence agency in the world is was the one run by the Vatican, right? Because the church was everywhere. The church was a superpower. It was bigger than any of these countries, you know. And the entire military operation of the Vatican was eventually moved to Switzerland. So Switzerland is, in a sense, the, the headquarters of all these intelligence agencies, in a sense. And the reason why it's important to make this fine distinction 
is because as soon as you move away from this mindset that the CIA is the top of the pyramid, as soon as you think, hang on, this oh, I wasn't saying the CIA was at the top of the pyramid, and I don't think Dr. Karlstrom is saying that either. He says they are the tools of the cabal. Yes, absolutely. But let me just add in one piece, because um, when we think back to how, um, you know, by the time America was conquered, the, the church already had a vast intelligence agency. You know, they had a vast network of snitches and informants, and they were snooping on all the royal households, you know, mm -hmm. or everywhere. So when, and remember who conquered America, it was royal households. So where's the Vatican and all this? Well, they went as well. So as soon as you had America conquered, you know, in the 15th century, you know, the, the day the first ship arrived, that was the day the first infiltrator and informant has arrived, right? So mm. America had already an intelligence agency back from day one, you know, because it was, it was, it was a business going to America, right? So everywhere you've got a business, you want to have um, industrial espionage. So... By the time an intelligence agency was set up in America, it was already controlled by the old intelligence agencies in Europe because that's where they came from. And the HQ never moved. The HQ never moved from Europe. Now, the reason why you have to understand this is because when, when they ran the CIA, they gave the CIA ostensibly a lot of power. But what they actually did is they used the CIA as a front for their operations. Right? Because remember what happened in the Second World War? The entirety of Europe was burning, apart from little Switzerland. And Switzerland had fewer people living in it than London. So how the hell can it be that you know Hitler and all these other scumbags conquered absolutely everything and they let Switzerland be? Well, that's because the entire operation was run from Switzerland. And remember how the Nazi gold ended up in Switzerland? Well, that's why, because what they did is they looted from everybody around and they stole as much as they could and they brought it back to Switzerland. Okay, so that, that's why Switzerland wasn't burning in the Second World War. It had nothing to do with neutrality or nonsense like that. What it had to do with is that the finance, so the finance um, people who funded the Second World War and the intelligence and military people were all in Switzerland. That was their base. So when we have the situation, you realize that after the Second World War, you know, um, remember how, how um, all the Nazis were funneled out into America, but they must have been funneled from Germany to Italy to be put on ships. And that goes via Switzerland. So the rat line going through Switzerland. So Switzerland organized it, the Jesuits helped put them on ships. And then, you know, they went off to Argentina, off to, off to the U.S. So, so that's the thing. And I really bang on about it because as soon as you realize that that's the old um, architecture of these intelligence agencies, you immediately understand why the program that, you know, ostensibly is run by the CIA in the U.S. and ostensibly is run by the CIA globally is identical in Germany and in the U.K. and even here in Switzerland. And so because... The CIA is just a branch office. So CIA Langley is just a branch office of CIA Switzerland. And MI6 is only a branch office. And so is German Federal Intelligence. They are just branch offices. So when, when the HQ decides to roll out a program, this program will be everywhere. You know? And so, so this is, you know, it seems like a fine distinction because what the hell do we care about where the um, controllers sit? You know, I mean, we are being murdered in, in the US or in France or in, in the UK, you know, what does it matter? But it matters an awful lot because we have to find out who has authorized this program um, and where does the money come from, you know, because this is huge. It but you know, Catherine, another very overriding question really is, given that we are the people who are being assaulted, and I, when I say we, I mean the citizenry of the different countries in the world. But given that we, the citizens of the world, are being assaulted, are being attacked, are being hit with electronic weapons, stealth weapons, I might add, which nobody can detect openly except with meters, spectrum analyzers, and all of the sophisticated equipment. Um, you know, we're being assaulted with this electronic stealth weaponry. 
We're also now being assaulted with electronic neuroweaponry. People are being, people's brains are being assaulted. And this is why it puts all of us, it puts humanity on a different keel altogether. We are at a different moment in time. We are at an intensely urgent, important moment in time. Because literally what has happened is the weaponry that's been developed currently can remove our cognitive processes, can assault our cognitive, cognitive processes, can invade our brains and are already invading and intruding into the brains of a certain number, possibly thousands, possibly millions across the, across the world of, of individuals worldwide. You know, and it may be convenient for some people to call these people targeted individuals and say they're an extreme minority. But in actuality, this number is ranging into the millions and there are concentric rings of attack. So because we are at this incredibly dangerous moment in time in history, one of the overriding questions is, how do we stop it? How, what do we do to stop it? And actually, Dr. Karlstrom has some wonderful um, solutions as well. So I'd be curious if perhaps we can talk about solutions and we can you know, pull up his list of solutions as well. And one of the, I can tell you very briefly, one of the solutions he suggests is to see it as a national issue, just as much as an international issue, and approach the people nationally. And he's talking about America, of course. He's talking about the CIA, and he's talking about, you know, we have recourse in this country to speak out about the CIA and to demand that the CIA stop these activities. And so he talks about, you know, writing letters to Congress, to, to the NSA, to DHS, um, to speak out, to do class action lawsuits, all sorts of things. He's got a whole list of solutions. So, you know, perhaps that's also a question that we can consider. What are some of the, you know, um, there probably are a number of solutions. So perhaps we can kind of explore a little bit what those solutions may be. What recourse do humans have at this point in time? I think exactly. Remember, I always do. Sorry, you go first, man. Okay, she brought up the weapons that are being used. There's, uh, there is something that is very important that we need to understand about how we are also being assaulted. It's the biofeedback software. The biofeedback software only needs to know where you were born to be able to, to find you and to work on you with or without your permission. And the reason I know that, I was in Louisville, Kentucky the first time I had my biofeedback uh, scan, and the practitioner was in Scottsdale, Arizona. And all he needed to know was my place of birth. So now social media is beginning to draw us out to give our personal information because you have to sign up. So on Facebook in particular, it wants to know your place of birth. Do you realize how many people are able to access us? They're able to change our, our frequencies. They're able to start diseases. They're able to do things to us without our permission for, on, on a medical standpoint by this software. The second time I had biofeedback, subspace is what she told me it was called. She said it's the same software they use on the astronauts when they are in space. She was also in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was in my home in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. She ran that software on me, I think, for about two or three hours to, to identify things that were going wrong in my body systems and to try and correct it. But she said, and so did the man that the, who did the first biofeedback, both of them said, but we're Christian and we will only use the software for good. I want you to know that everybody isn't using this software for good. If they could purchase the software, so could you or I. In fact, there's a man that who doesn't live far from me. I've mentioned him before. He's a retired uh, newspaper editor. He showed me how the software works. He said, they can take your picture and put it in here. And from your picture, they can begin to do things to you from, uh, from afar. So these are also space-based weapons. And we are making ourselves vulnerable by putting our information, our personal information, on Twitter and, and Facebook and other places where anyone can access it because all they need to know is where you were born. She told me the lady in Scottsdale said there's a frequency assigned or, or there's a specific frequency assessed to you from your place of birth. So that also could indicate that we were loaded into, into a supercomputers at birth and we were all given a, a frequency like an IP address. But the point is that we are vulnerable by sharing that information on in, in social media. 
and not knowing or realizing that anybody anywhere in these United States with the proper software can access you and do things to you without your permission and you not understand what's happening. That's that's a really a bombshell because I didn't know about these biofeedback things. But to, you know what it sounds like to me? That one frequency, it sounds like we're all chipped. It sounds like we're all chipped. And it's the, the frequency of the chip, the readout chip. You know, I just expect Lockheed Martin software to just, you know, show the, you know, individual frequencies. Because somewhere I did, I did, someone did send me a screenshot of a Lockheed Martin software, which showed, I think, 11 chips, and they all had frequencies. I think, like, I think six or, or eight decimal places, something absolutely insane, you know. But I think once you've got so many, so many different frequencies, you can, you can, you can put the entire population onto some sort of frequency, you know, put a chip in there and identify us. So I think what um, is actually being done is the commercialization of the old Nazi infrastructure that was put in place in the Second World War. Sure. You know, and um, I think everything in the, I think the entire concentration camps and what they did on the, um, what the Nazis did, I think it was one big experiment. It was an experiment of what works. You know, can you mobilize so many people? Can you make so many people kill so many others? Can you, um, and also I remember reading or uh, hearing about a book where they talked about that IBM supported the cataloging of all the, the people in the concentration camps, you know? That was when they first started having large databases to, to keep track of, of if you, if I hate this word, but the livestock, you know? And I think what happened after the war is that they started chipping people. And by now, I think, you know, the vaccines, because every baby gets vaccinated as soon as they are born. I think the vaccines just load chips into us, you know, by default. That, that's why. Um, I think there's all this, this covert chipping. But um, if that's the case, then we must be able to find it. You know? We must be able to find these chips because if somebody can read them out, so can somebody else. Right. Um, but now... But I think it also might be interesting, Catherine, to look further into this biofeedback and subspace information that uh, Millicent is talking about. Um, she did kind of mention that I remember when we were working on the article together. But it's a whole field of information, I think, uh, which might be worth exploring. I wonder if there are connections to um, energy medicine and things like that. Right. Exactly. No, it's amazing. It's amazing what can be done to a person with with the biofeedback software. Can you believe that it can identify the tooth in your mouth that's hurting or give you a chiropractor adjustment? So what if they were just kind of adjusting your your a vertebrae out of place? And I've had some of that done too. You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like to me that um, these chips are the body area network. So I, I suspect that we're all chipped. You know, we are already, you know, utterly cluttered with chips. And when you go for these biofeedback um, sort of analyses, they re I would, I guess, because I never had one, I would, I've got this creepy suspicion. They read out the chips. And then, for example, things like toothache and having a vertebrae dislocated. Well, that you can do with these, um, you know, with the ultrasonic uh, weapons and with the electromagnetic weapons. Yes. So it sounds like all the biofeedback test does is read out the chips, identify who you are, and then log into the big database and check what is being done to you. It's easy that way, isn't it? You know, when they are using it. Because with me, they try to trigger a toothache and they try to, they actually did try to dislocate a vertebrae by just, when you're at night, they vibrate your body. And when your muscles are relaxed, you can literally vibrate a vertebrae out of place. So you wake up, you don't realize it's slightly dislocated, and all you have to do is, is move, and then suddenly you trap the nerve, you know? They did, they had a, a phase when they tried to do that. You can read more about the, uh, the software that's available and that's being used. One of them is called SCIO, S-C-I-O. Okay. Uh, I, I've been to a local a health food store, and theirs was QXY, mm, QX, I'll have to find that name, 
but you can actually read about it. And if you can read about it, you can know all the many different things that can be done to you with or without a chip in your body, uh, strictly based on what they said. Now, with the QXCI, I believe it's called, I actually went down to the health food store. They put a, a cord around my ankle, I believe, that was connected to a, a computer, and it was able to scan my body. Now, how they did the subspace, I am not sure. Both of these people were in, in Scottsdale, Arizona, interestingly enough. But I do tell you that the first time I had it done, I was in Louisville, Kentucky, which is mm, right at three hours away from here. And the second time, I was in my home in Mount Pleasant. But both times, they were in Scottsdale, Arizona. So that's definitely significant space or distance between us, yet they were able to manipulate parts of my body or things in my body to try and help me not have disease. But what if you had someone with the same software manipulating your body to make you have disease? Yeah, I think exactly that's it. I mean, I, I really, there has to be an investigation of what exactly is being, is being done with these, um, these feedback analyses, you know, I, um, I, I think there's a lot more just covert technology going on than we, than we actually realize. And they don't, they don't give us the full story because I think, what they, you know, what the cartel has been doing um, and loves to do and what the intelligence agencies love to do is have, um, I mean, compartmentalization, of course, but also secrecy, have insiders, you know, have different rings of different insiders and um, you know, certain insiders know more about how stuff actually works than, than others. Um, I think the way to investigate that would be really to start looking for these chips and um, you know, having a look at the software, taking it apart, reverse engineering it, and, and finding out what's actually going on. Um, the other thing I want to say is, you know, about um, and this is very important. I think about you know, we asked what to do about it all mm -hmm. because. I think what we're facing is a, is a global Nazi takeover. And I banged on so much about the role of, of Switzerland and, and the old countries, if you like, old Europe, because I think a lot of the problems. But what it means is that if the CIA is acting to the tune of a foreign country, you what what is actually happening is that the people of the US are being, uh, well, slaughtered like cattle, sadly. I mean, I hate to use this term, but, but this is it, on the orders of a foreign power. So what you have to do is you have to get the leaders of the CIA and all other intelligence and law enforcement agencies for treason. It's high treason. It is the it is. of high treason. You know? And I think that is what we're seeing. But it's even more complicated than that because, you know, I noticed that July 5 is not acting in the best interests of the UK as much as the CIA and even the NSA is not acting in the best interests of, of um, the US. So the question mm -hmm. is in whose best interest are they acting? And I think they are acting as, as you know, we all said earlier, in the best interest, as you said, Ramola, earlier, in the best interest of the moneyed interests of the cartel, you know, mm -hmm. but the cartel is a, is a global corporation, and it's because mm -hmm. it's global, most of its parts are outside any particular country, and therefore any country acting, <coughs> dancing to its whistle, um, well, the officials to do that are committing high treason. They are. And in fact, one of the things Dr. Carlstrom mentions, well, of course, in reference particularly to the CIA and the US CIA in the countries of the world, is that um, he says that basically what they, in running these horrific operations in all of these other countries, what they're doing essentially is completely disregarding and dismissing the sovereignty of these nations, completely dismissing it, not recognizing it, not recognizing that every country in the world has its own right to exist as a sovereign nation state, make its own laws and exist by those laws. Completely ignoring that and simply going in like giant uh, squid and octopus number one and taking over, you know? They assume that they own all. They, they, the Vatican has stated that they own all the wealth in the world and they own all the people. I think <laughs> what a joke. You know, and, and, and it's always coming from the bankers. They have all the money. 
They have 90% of the wealth in the world. It's not about money. It's not about money. It's about us. It's about humanity. And it's about the destruction of humanity is what it's all about. I mean, they have the money. It's about control, right? It's about taking uh, over. They still have the, they have the money when it's in Switzerland. They have the money. So I, I, would, I would encourage to look at a more deep motive rather than just money because it's shallow. They have the money. They don't need the money. They manipulate the money. They have the money. Now they might slide on particular parts of the money. That, that's the second But it also has to do, yikes, I don't know what's happening, but uh, Paul's feet is frozen. Can you hear me? Anybody out there, Catherine? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, all right. Oh, Karen's coming back. I, I don't see Millicent on. Um, so I was just going to say, in response to what Paul said, that it's um, not just about the money because we already have the money. It's about humanity that uh, perhaps it's about controlling humanity as they are gearing up to ramp up this global fascist state that, that appears to be well underway to being rolled out on the entire world. I, I think that's correct. Um, that is totally correct. It, it is certainly about power and control. The one thing I want to throw in, it's a subtle distinction, but it's, it, it goes to the heart of the matter, there's a difference between money and assets. Because what I would say is that they have certainly all the money, but what they want is all the assets. So the difference between the two is that when you have, um, you know, when you have the money, you're printing it, but you're developed by printing your own money, you're devaluing your own money. If you want to accrue more and more power, you have to get real assets. That's why they invaded Iraq to get the real assets of oil. You know, which they need for the temporary, you know, system that they are operating. <laughs> and, um, what they are after now is is land um, and and fresh water and and all the other productive assets. And humans are, I think, in their mind, in the same category as, as cattle. And mm -hmm. therefore, productive humans are also, you know, one of the things that they are after. That's why they want to control us. You know. And remember, I just remembered something. They're also at the lip of, you know, um, complete robotization. <clears throat> because if you read some of these military documents and articles that are just now coming out, there's all sorts of projections that by certain time periods, humans are going to be obsolete, you know, because robots are going to be rolled in. And they think with AI, with artificial intelligence, as they're continuing to develop it, that soon uh, there will be no need for the human brain. So literally what they're doing now in their mind is perfectly okay because we're all going to be obsolete in a few years anyway. So they think by 2025 or 2040, I think maybe it's actually as close as 2025, they seem to think that a high percentage of humans in the workplace are going to be replaced with robots. You know, and so in connection with that as well, let's not forget that there are actual depopulation schemes in place currently and in action currently and that have been in action apparently over the past 60 years through distinct united nations policies you're right oh, the cancer Act. agenda is one of the depopulation the depopulation mechanisms when you talk about assets they want oil and they want that stuff oil is a sham oil is a is a reoccurring substance it's like water there's no limit to it what they they've orchestrated it into the position where they, because they have all the rest of the power enslavement technique so so these recent uranium's the same way it's just an enslavement technique uh, and they, by by why couldn't they just come and get the assets i mean they have all of all the military in the world it's about people it's about it's it's a battle for people and uh, they can be dead. Everything. Could you, you repeat to... that, Paul? Because you broke it up just now. Okay, I I said that yes, uh, yes, they they do want assets, 
But the assets are a sham. They're like diamonds. Diamonds are one of the most plentiful things on the planet. But because out and when they find them, they valuable. The same as oil. Oil, there's an infinite supply of oil. It's like water, there's an infinite supply of water. What they want to do is keep you thinking that there isn't any and that we have to fight for it and compete for it. And it has some value. It only has value there. We live in a lack. They put us in a lack. So we lack this and we lack that and we have to struggle and fight for it and they control it so they can control us. Mm -hmm. It's all about controlling us. The bottom line is they want us. They want, they want our commitment to them mm -hmm. and not our commitment to free will. Mm -hmm. They want us to, in, to them. Now it always rolls out. They can have all the money and the money can buy all the assets. They have all the military, and the military can conquer anything they want. I mean, we're going, in the United States, they're going to World War III. Everybody's awake to the fact that it's a PSYOP. There's a whole lot of people that know that World War II was a The people that are, well, they're going to go to World War III. They don't care about you. It's part of the plan. It's part of the script. It's part of the way that they're going to control it. So, so yeah, I think it's if you go back to the money and stuff, it, don't, it can only take you so far. Uh, after they have all the money and they have all the assets, where do you go from? Also, and this is going to be even more far out than probably that one. If they look for your place of birth, you want to know your place of birth? That's really interesting. Because in order to do anything with astrology, you need the date, the time, and the place of birth. And I know that most people are going to listen to this. Really, uh, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan said, astrology is not for millionaires. It's for billionaires. And the cabal, you can believe they use astrology to map out what they're doing and time what they're doing. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a branch of astrology, astrology called Vedic astrology. It's, it's the ancient times. And those Vedic astrologers, if you find a good Vedic astrologer, they can tell you things you wouldn't even know. I've heard that they can tell you the time and place of your birth or your death. So. In Western astrology, it's been so broken up and so kept a secret and so destroyed. I mean, you remember John on the predicted all these incredible things. Uh, if they're using astrology, we should get cool to astrology. Mm -hmm. If that's one of the secrets that the secret cabal uses, then we should be waking up to the fact that there's something to it. There's a lot of books. And a lot of things written on astrology that you can't, all major corporations. Mm -hmm. There have been five uh, days. We've got a, good, a good podcast going. We, we've been broken up so often. We must have a good one going. We must have, a, <laughs> we must have some good insights coming up. But anyways, as soon as you mentioned place of birth, everything... Uh, revolves around your place of birth in astrology yeah because yeah. It's during that, that uh gives you the experiences that you that you play out and so if they're using astrology and i know damn well they're using astrology and we're just oh it's not that it's it's biological and chemical and scientific uh not that i'm not now the scientific process is Uh, but we've, we've got to take everything into account because we're fighting secret societies that right. use everything at their, at their disposal. And they're yeah. not hampered by ethics or morals. Yeah. They're, they're just yeah. coming at us. And they're after and us. Yes, and Paul, I think actually touching on astrology, you're bringing up an aspect 
that, you know, in today, especially in westernized societies, and I would argue that pretty much the entire world has become westernized in terms of thinking because of colonialization, um, we've been trained to think of science as one thing and astrology right. and things like that as another. You know, that's voodoo, that's woo-woo, exactly. really. That's the kind of that's stuff right. we don't talk about. But if you look back historically, there have been distinct links between science and astrology. There was a time period when astrology and astronomy worked together. And then we have the history of Western science coming in, stepping in to dissociate the two and to create the system whereby we're focused on science. And actually, that very rigid focus on science has today brought us to a point where we're also focused on junk science, which is ethics-less science. You know, science that does not take humanity into account, and I mean on two levels, um, you know, humanity as a species and humanity as compassion as well. So that's where science is today or purports to be and, and does a whole lot of things in the name of science. So, you know, it, so bringing up astrology at this point is a reminder to us to perhaps go back and look at those origins of dissociation and see what else we've been split from. And one of the other things that we've been split from is natural science. You know, patterns in nature, things like the Fibonacci sequence, the golden mean, you know, you bring in, these are now in math and science, but it's not until you begin to work with nature, how these patterns in science are played out in nature, that you begin to understand essential symmetries and patterns in the universe that exist already. And that's sort of the realm of sacred geometry. So, you know, that's another whole realm that we kind of need to wake up to and take into account. Because as you said, those billionaires who are sitting around sacrificing children and drinking people's blood and creating <laughs> wars around the world and burning up Grenfell Tower in London, those billionaires are watching the stars, reading astrology, reading their palms, looking into the future, reading their past lives. You know, I don't know what else we are doing. And, um, you know, talking to spirits probably. You know, cohorting with the dead, of course, is something they like to do, cohorting with demons and so forth. Um, and um, also looking into sacred geometry. So they are working with ley lines, with the Earth's ley lines, with energy lines in the, in the, on, right. on the right. Earth's electromagnetic field. They're working with sacred geometry, principles of sacred geometry. So perhaps in order to beat them or to stop them, we need to get savvy pretty quickly. You know, to all of these occult sciences, occulted sciences. I, I think I, I, I totally agree to the last sentiment that if you want to beat them, we need to get savvy um, at absolutely everything that they get up to. The one big word of warning I would like to put out about astrology is the following. Um, Mr. Diamond is right in a sense that astrology is, is probably done you know, it's, it's accessed by billionaires. However, I would also say that uh, Jamie Dimon is not the sort of guy who would be um, engaging in esoterics because his job is pretty cutthroat mathematics and asset stripping during the day. So when there's a break like that, I would say that Mr. Dimon talks code. He talks code. The word astrology means something different to him than it may be mean to us. I think there's so much about, you know, trying to lead us down the astrology path and saying, oh, you know, it's a, war, a spiritual warfare, whereas in actual fact we can say, no, it's not. It's implants and deadly weapons. Um, now, with the astrology path, um, what you said, Paul, is right. You know, some people can tell, you know, the date of birth and the date of death. Um, but it very much reminds me of, uh, you know, of, uh, of a joke about, you know, about the mafia because what's the difference between the daily newspaper and the mafia well the daily newspaper it tells you who died you know the past week and the mafia tells you who's going to die the next week um and when we're talking with billionaires we are talking about the mafia actually so um you know the the billionaires league 
um, there's something peculiar about them because they have been in the game of controlling um, assets, um, very large assets, and controlling large numbers of people for a very, very long time. And they also, you know, as we know, um, at the top of the pyramid, so they have a very high fraction of psychopaths, and they have to navigate the world of psychopaths. So they have to one up each other and and do um, dominance displays for each other so that they don't get killed. <laughs> One of the things that I have heard is that what um, it, I have heard that there are some people associated with, with the Vatican operations of world control, and there are some people who all they do is dart around the world in, in jets um, with a computer and try to ensure that things in the world happen according to a plan. And then that plan is you know, uh, it's, it's, it's put out and is presented as if it was according to ancient rules, you know, because they have to control a huge operation of, of criminals. So they have to pretend to have more power than they actually have. And the, the way to do that classically, this is how the, the temple priests of old have done it. They pretended to have a connection to God or to, to a supernatural power. And in actual fact, what they're doing is running the global intelligence agency operation and are running psyops at large scales and small scales, you know. And um, they predict, for example, the, the death of Princess Diana was um, you know, then reinterpreted for, you know, il Illuminati consumption as, oh, well, you know, the name Diana and then she died at whatever, you know, tunnel and whatever pillar. Then I don't know how many, you know, numbers of pillars and what bridges and, oh, my God, I once saw a little presentation on that. And, you know, the mind boggles because it's, it's not the drivel and nonsense that these people subscribe to, to but they take it so incredibly seriously. But in actual fact, what happened is that some you know, special branch type of, uh, you know, hit squad just murdered the people, you know, they took them out and they can take them out forever. So if they want to choreograph it such that it's next to a particular bridge, they will take them out there. And if they don't manage, they will drag the car backwards 50 meters and place it there, you know. So, I mean, that's what actually happened. Um, but it had to be. Well, oh, that's to absolutely. I think that's absolutely happening. I think that. They're choreographing it to fit in with revelations. Yeah. And what that does is that, um, I'm not knocking Christianity because I might even be one. Uh, what the, they're orchestrating it so that there are a lot of people who will um, say things to comment on our videos like um, Jesus is coming uh, get yourself straight, uh, don't worry about it, Jesus is going to clear it up, and all that stuff. And that is a disservice to humanity, because it immobilizes those people. So no, they, they do, they use superstition, they use all that stuff to really get us, but they also use science. That's right. Most people that watch TV are going to say the GMOs, well, wow, that's, that's going to save the planet. Or that you know, so so science has been corrupted and used in that way also. So there's and there's a whole new age. Actually, if you go, uh, if you like Eric Carlson stuff, he's got a powerful uh, website on debunking a lot of the new age things, which are designed exactly to do exactly what you're saying, Catherine. Pull people out into into the woo woo land out there and really. And, and distract them. But if you're comparing that to astrology, you're really making a mistake. Science has gotten out of their way in the early 30s to debunk astrology. Uh, there, were, there were scientific studies. I was actually going to do one myself. Uh, there's, there's a lot of scientific basis for it, but if you're if you're in a doctoral program in any place in the United States, and you say, well, I want to correlate uh, astrological placements with some other aspects. Of, I was going to do it with Myers Briggs. Uh, no one even listen to you. That's how much the 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 uh, the banksters control what's allowed to be investigated in the universities. It's nonsense. It's it's crazy. How could that? 
wow, what? It directed people's lives for thousands of years. And we're saying that we're uh, descended from people who were, who, were, uh, who were less intelligent than us? Yeah, they built uh, Godepi Tepli, they built the pyramids, they built things in South America down here that we can't even replicate with our technology. So I think that there was some wisdom back then. And if we're throwing it out in our position, they're certainly not throwing it out. That's right. And, and they're, they're on some level, I don't know Jamie Dimon from anybody, but on some level, they're using these techniques along with science, along with demon, demon magic. I don't know whether you've ever, go on YouTube and, and Google, uh, put in the search engine, demon magic. And, and watch a few of those videos and scientifically explain how they did it. There's, there could be a scientific explanation. I, I certainly couldn't do it. Uh, they were doing things that didn't, isn't humanly possible as far as I'm concerned. But then, you know, what do I know? But all, all I'm saying is that there's a bigger agenda here than money. And they're connected with uh, things that they know about. Why would they sacrifice children to Moloch every year at, at Bohemian Grove? They know something yeah. we don't know. You know, they, they know stuff. And unless we in, embrace the fact that they know stuff that we don't know and try to learn it, we're, what we're doing is we're fighting on the pawn level. You know, we're taking, this is a chip. Oh, let's find out their chips. And they're way above that. That's a chip right. is just a, a matter of fact, I'm not sure that we're not, I think they chip all people at birth since the 80s in the U.S. That's I don't know why they do that internationally. Uh, yeah, it's, we're chip. It's really suspect, yeah. I think, you know, because I, I agree that we have to understand what they're doing, but I think um, what I'm trying to do is really whittle it down to the skeleton because what you said, so what they are saying, what they are saying, is oh you know sacrificing children gives us the supreme power and yada yada. I mean there's this um, I think Alex Jones made a video from you know when he actually infiltrated Bohemian Grove and it's just all this like woo you know like you know crazy laughing and just you know people being generally <laughs> what's in English called that shit crazy. But anyway, the question is what's what its function? And its function is what we I think what we're missing in this because we're not navigating the world that they are in is we have to navigate a world of psychopaths who are they can kill without blinking and they, they are all after each other's assets and they all want to up each other and then when you're in when you're down with this gang you have to get off your back and the way you get off your back by, by you know what the psychopaths amongst each other they know they have a competitive advantage for us just compared like it's like we have playing golf with having a team because we like keep everybody on board we care for disabled people we care for the weak we care for the elderly they don't care they don't care about anything but themselves it gives them this incredible competitive advantage now imagine you in the in the billionaires league where everybody doesn't care, you know. So everybody knows that everybody else in the room also doesn't care about them and could kill them. I mean, they could just spike their drink and just kill them on the spot and then take over their company. Now, if you have to navigate this sort of world, you have to do a lot of dominance displays just to scare the other people. You have to appear very big. You have to say, well, I've got this army. If you kill me or my, my daughter, I'm going to still kill you. And this sort of stuff. So you've got this one-upmanship. And eventually, what they are doing with is their, their, their pure psychopathy. You know, I think the child sacrifice is what we're seeing is this arms race that has grown over just not just decades, but centuries to the ultimate of who can be sicker than everybody else. <coughs> And what is there quicker than, than torturing, tormenting, torturing, mutilating, and then slowly murdering a child, you know? And, and that's what they do to, to show everybody else that they're still, you know, first of all, down with the homie as far as, you know, they all keep their control files so they can snitch on each other should, you know, push up, come to, to shove. I'm sure they all 
filming these sort of child sacrifice sessions of incriminating, incriminating material on each other, but also the function of these really gory scenes is to, to demonstrate to everybody else that they are that they are totally nuts. So for example, they are, but Catherine, I think there's a very important point as well that I think Paul is making that, that these guys have literally gone over to the dark side. Exactly. They've uh, they're soliciting forces and powers that are beyond this space-time dimension of reality that you and I inhabit, this material dimension that we inhabit. And we're talking about other dimensions. And you know, this is where I guess there may be issues with science as we know it, with physics as we know it, and understandings of dimensions from spiritual uh, traditions, for instance, and understanding of um, dimensions, I guess, from religious traditions, really. I'm thinking of the chakra system. I'm thinking of right. other planes of being, astral bodies, ethereal bodies, energy right. bodies, beyond right. our physical material bodies. But right. in, in, in Western rational science, we are taught to believe and understand and speak purely within the paradigm of the material right. human body and the material right. world that we inhabit. Right? right, but if you go into Christianity or Hinduism or any religion, you will get an understanding of dimensions outside the physical that are more ethereal and that can you know have people and spirits inhabiting those dimensions. And there's you know issues of dark and light, there are dark energies and light energies. And so these people apparently are soliciting dark energies and demons and dark forces sacrificing children and so forth and obviously we are never going to do that we are looking at what they are doing recognizing what they are doing and saying that we too have a power and our power is of the light that's um, right that's ramola you know actually i i did uh in the early years of targeting i ran across a website of a, of a, a man who said that he was being trained to be part of this organized crime ring mm -hmm. and he said once he realized how deep in the darkness they were getting he said that's when he met jesus and he got out but then he went back and began to tell us give us a prayer of of what to pray and we were in that prayer were all of the parts of the chakras and how they're being used against us what we don't recognize are the many ways that our body maps as a tree uh, even to our our uh, spine and our uh, our vertebrae, they map to other parts of our bodies, and so the the perpetrators know that knocking out a specific vertebrae, say for instance, my number ten is going to affect my kidneys and my liver, and you see what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. remember, I sent you all an email last week, and I I was telling you of the many ways this guy says that he can kill me. Mm -hmm. Well, in 2008, when he began to uh, explain to this county all the things he was going to do to me, he was talking about etheric body. He did indeed talk about Kabbalah. He talked about esoteric sciences. Mm -hmm. So this is not, and all of it can be done now electronically. That's the piece we have to understand. This is called electronic witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And it's all been developed by the military. Well, one thing I would like to say about that is that it's true <coughs> that you're talking about witchcraft county, but that's because he's a psychopath trying to brain everybody else. He wants everybody to believe he's got a supreme power. You know, the people who really understand this technology, they are maybe they are, the Air Force and so on. It's really how to from the cut off. Get closer to your uh, your your receiver. We're not hearing you well enough. I oh, really want to hear what you're saying. Is, is this better now? Is this better? Not yet. No, that's not better. <laughs> No. 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 Very distant and muffled and broken up. Your end of this is very important, Catherine. See if you can okay. I'm trying to increase the volume. Can you hear me now? That's yeah. better. Yes, dear. Okay, I'll try to talk into the phone. So I, I suspect that um, it's true that um, you know 
um, the perpetrator would have used this terminology, but um, it's because he's, he's a psychopath, trying to break all the others. So he's the classic psychopath coming across as a god, having extreme power. When we look at weapons and how they actually work, the people who really understand them are the military. So if we're looking at how to protect ourselves, well, how does the military protect itself? It's certainly not by prayer. It's by solid deal, you know? They have countermeasures. So, yeah, they have electronic countermeasures. Exactly, but... And some the of the countermeasures are also music and grounding. And that's that's not in your normal scheme of, of thinking either. You see what I'm saying? I, I've often been told that I need to ground, walking in the sand, uh, mm -hmm. just actually walking outside barefoot so that it drains the extra energy. That's esoteric, is it not? Well, it, it depends how the technology works because the music, for example, if um, if um, Robert Duncan and Brian, you are right, we have these chips, and these chips are they're not for communication with a supercomputer, trying to take all with need to have a dominant external stimulus, and that's the music. You know, they want to have disconnected um, from the, the supercomputer by overloading your brain with external stimuli that your brain locks on, like a dominant music playing in your room. You can think great again because you know, the supercomputer doesn't know how to influence the thoughts anymore. So that's the role. That's the role music can play. I can hardly hear you uh, again. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can't. No, can't I make can't. Catherine, yeah. very okay. broken up. Somebody suggested. Somebody in the chat room suggested that you go to video auto. Uh, auto. Go to video auto. Switch video to auto. Switch video to auto. Hang on. Um, and someone else says that she should hang up and redial in two different people. Yeah, another person said hang up and redial in, Catherine. I will try. Can you hear me now? I'm closer to the router. That's yes, we can hear better. you. You're much better now. Okay, I'll try to stay here. So um, I think um, I think that so what I said is I think the role of the music is that um, if, if um, Dr. Robert Duncan and Brian, you are right, we have, you know, I, I thought they don't talk about chips, but I, I would say we have chips in our brains and they are hooked up to a supercomputer and the chips are running a current into our brains um, as to the, um, you know, the controls of the supercomputer are trying to, and they have these hive mind teams playing around with our brains. If you want to disconnect from that, Brian Hughes says that you have to have a dominant external stimulus. So a dominant external stimulus could be music, because then your brain locks onto the music, especially if it's very rhythmical, and then suddenly the, the pattern recognition of the of the supercomputer, the way it picks up the signals in your brain, is is not what it's sending anymore. You know, it has to suddenly react to an external stimulus, and then it can't correct it. So Brian too recommends listening to music to to decouple from this supercomputer working our brain, um, and that could be I think scientifically that I could understand how that works. He also says, you know, anything other thing, any other things that would be dominant, like sports or, or uh, licking your fingers or something else. Now, the, the thing with the sand, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would have to find out more about the technology, you know, what the sand, maybe this it's using some sort of, um, I don't know, uh, what would it be, a voltage difference, if your feet are touching different um, surfaces. I have no idea. It, it could be something to do with that. Um, but I think, um, for me, what, what's really important when we're talking about how the hell to beat them is whatever we do, we have to do something else than what they expect us to do. So if, if the psychopaths are going on about having the power of demons, I think I would go the opposite direction, and I would say, no, they don't. They probably have access to uh, military technology, and otherwise, they are just they are mortal. You know, they do not have any anything else. Now, I think on the other hand, though, we do have a point because yes, science has been corrupted. I can attest to that. But I would also like to say that um, there are different hierarchies in science. There are the hard sciences, um, and for example, I physics, medical physics, and it blew my mind because I realized that in 
particle physics, we spent so much time understanding statistics. Catherine, like our... Catherine, hold on. What, what you're saying is so important. I, would you hang up and try to get dial back in and see if that gives you a better connection? Because I oh, really yes. know what you're saying. Okay, I'll just back away. Okay, here we go. So I guess Catherine's going into um, the hierarchies within the sciences. Um, but you know, in terms of grounding that she talked about, oh, there she is. She's back again. We can continue our conversation. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. So what I what I was I, I didn't want to bang on. I just wanted to um, you know. Um, come up with a with a tip because um you know in a sense okay so what i was saying is the following when these psychopaths um tell us stuff i think 99 percent of the time they are trying to mislead so if we have a psychopath telling us that he has supreme power and he can summon demons i would go the opposite direction and say he's actually he's got access to military technology and otherwise he's just a mere mortal um that's step, step number one but I think, even though I'm atheist, I think you guys do have a point when you're talking about um, connecting to Jesus and what he was saying. I, I actually totally agree with that, even though I'm an atheist. And that is because I've, I came to the realization that everything that Jesus stood for and what he was actually preaching, there is a definite point behind that. I think he was a, probably a prodigy. I think he was a genius. He had something, some special gift. And everything that he said <laughs> does have a justification when you're going to the systems analysis of complex human systems. So, caring for the um, for the elderly, caring for the uh, for the the ill, you know, and also connecting to each other. It is so important caring for each other. It's it's super important, and I think this is the way to beat the system. I think Jesus in his day was up against pretty much the same cartel. You know, when he threw the money changes out of the church, he was up against the same cartel. When he was fighting the, you know, Roman overlords, he was up against the same same cartel. And he saw in his day things that are almost identical to what we see now. Yes, there's all this fancy technology and neurotech and all that. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to human corruptibility. You know, it comes down to some aristocratic overlords trying to get one up on each other uh, on everybody else and there it comes down to the real values we have in our society and how do we rescue the real values in our society and if we go back to the to the day that jesus was alive he, he was his systems were certainly in deep capture you know there were some people who were who had captured the judiciary right the the form of the police force they had in the day, the military, and they were ruling them. And his question was, how do you how do you save humanity? How do you save what's human in a system like that? And he said, you know, you have to take everybody seriously. You have to care for the person who is, you know, a leper, you know, lying next to the street. You have to care for everybody. Um, you have to care for each other. And why is that? Be your brother's keeper. Yes, exactly. And why is that so important? Because I say he was right to the letter. And I say it's because when you do that, well, in, in the terms of physics of systems, you set off a mechanism that is supremely powerful because you suddenly pull the skills, the know-how, and the enthusiasm you know, and the love, because love is, is the energy to care for each other. If you unify that, you have a supreme force that no one can stop. Right. And it's con contagious. It's, it's like a fire. You're lighting a fire because people will come to it because it makes life easier. And people gravitate to things that make life easier, you know? Because you you're, suddenly you're exactly it. right. And that's exactly what's happening with these forums. We have people from all over the world showing compassion. It's a fight to fight uh, the humanness. They're, 
and you guys are, are wonderful because they're pouring their hearts out to you and they're 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 forming alliances in their mind with you because they want to defend you and um it's just it's just wonderful humanity seems to be waking up yeah and this exactly is like techno crime fighters forum you know as simple as we are trying our darndest it, i think it's actually working and it's working in the part that they can't fight us on you can't fight us on sympathy and caring and loving and, and compassion the beautiful thing and and, and that really is the essence of the light that we were talking about a minute earlier, isn't it, Paul? Because, you know, there you have these dark people worshipping demonic forces, thinking they're going to get somewhere with it, you know, setting up piles of money for themselves and, you know, thinking they're having a fabulous life, suppressing and repressing the rest of us. But on the other hand, what we have is literally something very simple, as Catherine said. You know, it's simply connectivity, connecting with our own humanity, connecting with everybody else's. And um, holding hands in a circle, caring for each other, um, watching out for each other, speaking out for each other, and uh, taking action for each other. That is the essence of the light that we have. And actually, the other thing I wanted to mention was individuality. Because, you know, what, what's, what they're trying to rub out currently with all of this totalitarian stuff is to group everybody, throw you under umbrella organizations and umbrella groups, bring you bring you and then bring you under the fold of the larger one world government so and what they really despise is people standing out and speaking out as themselves recognizing their inner sovereignty as special unique beings who have entered this lifetime entirely on their own terms <coughs> they, they do not want that recognition they do not want that understanding and yet that may be one of the most powerful tools that we have our individuality, you know, in connection with our light, which is connection, caring, empathy, and so forth. So literally, we do have very powerful tools at our disposal. We kind of just have to wake up, recognize it, look within, and start taking action based on our own innate power. Right. We, we, so have, right. we also have, have things at our, uh, at our disposal. Now, back Millicent, you have something to say. Neeraj Yogi, the university. Oh, uh, do, you, do you know the Maharishi University? Maharishi University. They did studies in uh, TM meditation, and uh, some of the some of the studies I questioned, but there was one that was done in Washington D.C. It was back in and had a large number of meditators. Uh, it was a, a percentage of the population of the area in meditation. And uh, they were going to meditate in Washington, D.C. and stop the crime there. And uh, they publicized the results they wanted to get. And the chief, chief of police, the only way you're going to is if there's a massive snowstorm and it shuts down Washington, D.C. They meditated and got their results. Just people meditating, coming within themselves, connecting with their, I, you know, I, I don't know transcendental meditation. I, I've read books on it, but I, and I've tried to practice it, but I, I have to and so I think there are dangers with meditation too. But we have power. We have power as humans, as people. You know, we have, uh, it's, it's kind of like, a, I mean, we, we have, and Catherine talks about doing the unexpected. We're perfect for doing the unexpected. We're the only creative creatures on the planet. These, uh, our, our foes do not have creativity at all. If they have any creativity, it's from human beings. You see, if somebody was telling me the other day, actually David Beverly, he said, you know, if there's the mark of the beast, they're not original. So there's got to be a mark of God. You know, That's there's, right. everything they're doing is, is mirroring how it's supposed to be. So we need to come back, step into our power, and realize that there are things that we can do. And it's by being human. It's not by being a That's psychopath. Right. I, That's right. 
Go ahead. No, no, well, Catherine was really in, in a good place, and so was Ramola, because what Jesus did was establish the social order. And when what, what we've got now are those who are trying to reverse the appropriate social order. So they're trying to exchange love for hate. They're trying to exchange trust for distrust. And that's what this whole organized stalking thing is about. Only thing is the people who are participating don't realize that by them participating, they are actually giving up bits and pieces of themselves, of their humanity, of their of their connection with God and with the light. Um, I was told early on, years and years and years ago, they said, don't cooperate with the organized stalkers because they're going to only make you want, they're going to make you do more and more crime, criminal activity. And you know, the more guilty you are, the more you back back into the light, you really, I mean, into the darkness. You don't want people to see you. You don't want people to recognize that it's you. Um, I read the testimony of a of a, a T.I. of a perpetrator and he was saying that you know in spite of all the money he's made he's still afraid to be seen in public he doesn't feel safe or comfortable going to a restaurant to have a, a dinner with his family he he's not comfortable sitting in a movie so all of the money still makes him have to live in the dark and that doesn't help but but what Ramola was saying about us putting our individuality together our love our trust, our kindness, you know, all of the fruit of the spirit that Paul taught us about. As we put all of that together, it just produces a stronger and a stronger bond of love. And it takes us back to that place of social engineering that Jesus was our example of. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that I would like to ask the TIs that are your perps to step forward, because I know they're TIs too. In some regard or another, they're controlled some way. And I'll bet you Randy Webster's a TI. I'll bet you he's got more chips in him than you do, Melissa. Melissa, um, I would invite them to step forward and uh, call us, get in touch with us. We can make it public and you can, you know, I know it's dangerous, but you're not going to get satisfaction uh, from the dark side. There's, there's, a, there's a cheap, stupid movie. And it's called Bedazzle. And it starts Brendan Fraser and uh, Elizabeth Hurley. And it's perfect because you'll find all those people that have gone that way are not satisfied. I would suggest that Jamie Dimon isn't satisfied. What this, this acts out in a real simple slap, it's a comedy movie is that when you make the deal with the devil, with the dark side, it's never satisfying. There's always something missing. And it's always, it always goes wrong. If you look at all the people in Hollywood and all the people in politics that have openly gone to the dark side, I mean, uh, you know, um, I can't think of any other hand, but uh, oh, lots they're of not lot happy people. Singers. They're not happy. Go ahead, let me go on. I was thinking of all of the singers who get, you know, to the Grammy Awards or to the Olympics or the Super Bowl or whatever, and they're doing these crazy dances. I mean, Miley Cyrus, Beyonce, Rihanna, all of them, you know, they're all like part of the Illuminati uh, umbrella at this point. <laughs> Talking about umbrellas. I think that they're, I don't think they're happy. I think they're wealthy. I think they've got everything that they ask for, but it's not, it's not it because they're human or they were human at some point. No, I think it's, a, I think it's, a, it's an all out battle between the psychopaths, which are connected with some dark force that, that I don't know about, and people that are really human, that are coming forward and waking up. And I think the beauty of this, of this Techno Crime Fighters Forum is that you guys are so sincere and so open and so looking for help. Wasn't there a group that put together a fast or a meditation on your behalf this week? Yeah. I, Karen, are you still with us? Because if you're not, I'll explain it. Otherwise, there, there are people that Karen first met, and I'd like for her to talk about them. Um, yeah, I'm still here. I'm, I was having noise problems on my end, so I didn't want to interrupt everybody else. Um, yeah, there is a group who has been not just fasting. Speak up, Karen, speak up. 
Okay. Um, I said there is a group, and I'm not going to identify where they are yet, who has been fasting and praying for us actually maybe two, three months. They um, have different pastors who will uh, fast from, let's say, Monday through Saturday, and they are fully behind us trying to help the targeted individuals because they see it as a spiritual attack. And they have suffered too. They've, they've suffered some, we'll call it spiritual attacks on them because they've been so powerful. But I do see this as uh, a spiritual attack first manifesting itself in the physical so that we have to have a foot in each area. We have to have a foot in the spiritual. We do have to have a foot in the physical. Um, I love Charles Stanley. He's a pastor on the TV. And he what he tells people is that you get your marching orders on your knees. And um, I think he's entirely right. And I do commend these people. But they're not quite ready to identify themselves because they say, let us get the breakthrough answer. Let us make it happen. Let us clear the way. And then we about it but we're busy we're on track you know we don't want anything to uh distract us or distract other people and if you care to uh pray then you link with this group and god's going to know what group it is so in your prayers you say i pray in agreement with these mm -hmm. christian sisters and brothers and that adds oomph to your prayers so we will acknowledge them when the time comes, but it's, uh, they don't want to be quite acknowledged yet with any specific information. Thanks. That, when I heard about that, I was really blown away. I think that people are rising up. We get notices all the time. Thank you very much for bringing this out in the open. I want to talk to you. Can we, you know, it's, it's just the coming together of the TIs. And I think the, your perps are TIs. I think they need to start coming forward and saying the police, the police in the police department in your area, Millicent, I think the good ones need to come out. I know it's risky and I know it's dangerous, but there's no future for humanity unless we do that. Yes, we and you to know, start... <coughs> to, to bring it back to that, um, the dangers for humanity at this point, Paul, I think we have to sort of reminds people that literally we are in danger. We've all, we're already in the middle of being completely globally transhumanized, which is being flooded with chips from nanobots, from the aerosols and the chemtrails. Um, and through many other means, we are being turned into a different species and we are being repressed politically and socially. And, uh, you know, so all of this transhumanism, artificial intelligence, 5G coming our way, you know, to sort of finish us off with the incredibly intense EMS, well beyond what we currently have. And then robotization coming our way. All of this is in the pipeline and it's already halfway here. We're already in the middle of it. And this is why it's an issue of some urgency for everybody in the world to wake up. Begin to get aware. Start researching for yourself. Start reading. You know, and obviously don't read mainstream media. They, they're not covering this. They're not covering this at all. Go to, the, go to YouTube. Go to alternative media websites. Start reading. You know, keep listening. Find out more. And begin to call. Look, look at yourself. Go within and look within and call on your own power to step forward. Your own intellect. Your own yes. intellect. Because all of us have different capabilities, backgrounds, levels of ability. And all of us can contribute because we're literally in a quest to save humanity. No, I think that I would like to, I, I think that is exactly right. I think that's what people should do. Um, I, what I found is that a lot of the time people are willing to, um, they are willing to help and they are interested, but they don't know what to do, you know? And um, I think, hmm? I'm sure that's there too, yeah. I, and you know, going back to the very beginning of our um, of of the entire conversation when we're talking about you know the um the, the sheriffs dying and the press is not reporting it and we're being attacked with neuro weapons, um, so 
And I've, then we talked about, you know, the importance of love and caring for each other. So I would like to put a, a, an actual concrete spin on it because um, I said at the beginning that what we're dealing with is the systems in deep capture by a huge, you know, organized crime cartel and the intelligence agencies are um, controlled by foreign powers and, you know, headquartered in Switzerland and heck knows where else. So when that's the situation, what can you do and how does love and caring come into it? And it comes into it in very practical terms because when systems are captured by criminals, they start going wrong for people. So for example, when the judiciary was captured, they started coming up with bad judgments, in, you know, unjust judgments. And no one was there to listen to those court cases. People were not there in the public galleries because they didn't care. They thought, oh, you know, the judiciary, it's all boring. Why the hell would I care about the, you know, uh, care about that? I would much rather go out and, and um, you know, uh, attend a football match. And what that does is that the criminal cartel who cares passionately about the law, actually, you know, they went in, put in their, ju their judges, and now they rule the roost. Mm -hmm. If we want to get this stopped, we have to go via the judiciary, but all the corrupt judges are there. You know, if you want the targeting to stop, you would have to go to the police, but all the police are corrupted, it seems. So what is one to do? Well, what we all have to do is we have to start caring passionately about each other and what happens to each other. So when one of us, so for example, here's a good example. Um, in, in the UK, people have been complaining for a very long time about how unjust the family courts are. And there were a lot of fathers who said their son is being taken away. They are not given the custody. Sometimes the children are put into care, even though they could care for them. There was the entire Fathers for Justice campaign and, 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 and. What was that about? Well, the family courts are atrocious, not just in Britain, but also in Belgium. They are atrocious everywhere where they are prolific pedophile rings because the family courts seem to be a conveyor belt supplying children to these care homes and foster parents who then sell them on. Now, that is the, um, the, you know, the conduit into the, this crime cartel because then the, the kids are being sacrificed in these psychopathic rituals, you know, and then they're also being trafficked um, and they're also used to corrupt politicians who will then act according to the whims of the crime cartel. If we had cared about what happened to these children, if we had cared about the Fathers for Justice in the UK, it would not have come for this. But we didn't care, and we're paying the price as humanity. Yes, that's and you know... That's exactly perfect. We, we, in the United States, they have a shitty, excuse me, excuse my language, they have a very bad uh, education system. Why? No, we delegate it. We delegate it to uh, the school board, and now the federal government comes in and they have Common Core. We don't care. We just send them off because we have to go to work. It's the lack of caring that's got us into the situation. And it's caring that can get us out of the situation. It's not just yeah. the family courts, but everything. The medical profession is rotten to the core. They, honest to God, the allopathic medical system is probably the most satanic system on earth. It kills people. It kills more people than any than anything else in the U.S. Uh, why is that? Because we don't care. We we listen to our doctor. We we don't look into it. We but Paul, it's you know, also the same with government. It's an intellectual takeover of of society through taking over media and through taking over the education system. You know, the people who get into that education system and go and do their MPH, for instance, the Masters in Public Health Administration whatever it is, or maybe a PA, I'm not too sure. But when they do that degree, for instance, they're schooled in the thinking of the cabal. You know, the strategic thinking, which is eugenicist thinking, and it's top-down thinking. And it's that species, the Public Health Administration MPAs, who end up on the boards of the hospitals, you know, who end up on the boards of Planned Parenthood, who end up running all of these medical systems. And so they have a top-down attitude toward the rest of us. We are seen as sheep and cattle who need to be vaccinated because these people who often don't even have science degrees but just have that public health degree, you know, they might have degrees in something else and then do a public health degree. 
they so they don't even understand science. They don't even explore the science. They don't even look into what's in the vaccinations. But they will get out there, and with power and authority, say that the vaccinations are great. Then mainstream media, which is the propaganda arm of the government, will parrot that in print, and then the rest of the masses just suck that in. And so when people like you and I step out, we face massive, um, you know, debates, controversy, skepticism, and so forth. But in reality, the truth is being put out by people like us in blogs and in videos. I just wanted to throw it out, throw this out there. I think you're exactly right. I think it all comes back to what Catherine said. We have to care again and starting to care about one another and our children. No children should be getting vaccinated. There's so much evidence out there. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's such a massive cover-up. We shouldn't allow a child to go through that. Um, so we should be doing everything we can. And that's just where we have to start from. And I'm afraid that's where we have to start, stop today. We've gotten way over. But uh, it's been such a great discussion. And I appreciate you people so much. I really do. And everybody in the chat, it's been, it's been really lovely. Do you want to do a little sign-off and then we can... And then we can wrap number 15 up. Uh, Millicent, why don't, uh, why don't you do a little sign off, uh, thumb up and goodbye, and then we'll go, go from there. Thank you, Polly. It was really great to be with each of you this afternoon. We've had a great, a great discussion. I uh, want to tag on to what Karen was saying about those who are fasting and praying for us, those of, of you who ascribe to prayer and, um, and meditation. I want to encourage you to join us because we did indeed also decide to join them who are praying and fasting for us here in America. So join us as we pray for the light to be so exposed in this, in, in, in this society that we will all be free, not just in America, but worldwide. God bless you. Thank you very much, Millicent. Uh, Karen. I can't see you, but I hope you're still with us. Uh, I am. Like I said, I had to turn things off there because I was having construction and airplanes and all kinds of stuff. And so anytime I wanted to make a point, it was just too noisy. So I do apologize. Um, Get close. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I said uh, every time I wanted to make a, a comment, there was some kind of construction or airplanes flying really low. So I had to just kind of uh, go silent, go to radio silent so that people could hear what you guys had to say. So I do apologize. Um, but I'm in total agreement with Millicent. Like I said, um, this is spiritual manifesting itself in, in uh, physical. So whether you believe that or not, um, and then you, you do have to ascribe to the enemy the fact that they believe something of that same uh, ilk that they believe whether they are uh, tapping into something uh, spiritually awful which I do believe or whether they just think they do um, we have to know that about them that has to be within our um, arsenal to know the enemy you know um, so do consider that you know the fact that maybe we should try tapping into something much better than than humanity um and that they believe that they are tapping into something much greater than humanity on the dark side so um do kind of keep that in mind and everybody do keep hope do keep trying because we get wonderful wonderful input from people um i've gotten some leads like oh have you tried this no i haven't tried that well i love it you know because people are out there racking their brains thinking of things to do and we are too so we very much appreciate the team effort it's not a team of five it's a team of so many i can't count so i do thank each and every one of you and keep it up because we're trying to go with with your wonderful suggestions and we do appreciate every one of your prayers every one of your good thoughts and um i, I guess I'll, I'll just sign up with that god bless thank you karen Catherine, thank you for everything you've done. You want to just say a few words? So I think I also would like to chime in with what Millicent said, because this, I think the 21st century will be 
over the century we'll develop completely new systems because we have to and we have now gotten as humanity we've gotten ourselves into a very sticky spot and it's still touch and go if we can actually pull out fast enough i think we can um but for that we have to start caring and actually the people who started caring about us to the extent that they are fasting and praying exclusively for us they they did the first move they started caring about us and we have to reply by caring about them and what happened in their region of you know of planet earth and we have to extend that and start caring about what exactly happened in other places as well because we're all connected and in the case of this cartel it was this very cartel running riot around the world um and you know we are the newest the newest victims but there have been millions of victims before us and no That's one right. there, no one was there to care for them so That's now right. we have to come back and we what we're doing is we're paying the price for not having cared about the people who are already dead so the question is can we care now before we die wonderful very well said thank you very much catherine Ramola? Yes, that's brilliant, Catherine. I just want to echo what everyone has just said, Melissa, Karen, Catherine, and just say that, yes, it comes down to caring, connecting, showing empathy for each other, and recognizing that each of us in our separate groups around the world are actually in deep trouble. And we all need help. It's not just the four of us in this forum who are being targeted pretty extremely with electronic weapons, but everybody else is being hit with electronic weapons. Everyone else is being repressed, and so on and so forth. Um, and on this note, I should also just mention, because I'm working on an article to report on the launch of the targeted individual survey that Bill Binney and Kirk Beebe are heading. Um, that article should be out tonight. Please look at my website for that, everydayconcerned.net. And that survey is a huge survey, and it's meant to include every TI on the globe, on the face of the earth. So literally, we have two stalwarts, two towering, two powerhouses, two NSA whistleblowers, Bill Binney and Kirk Wabey, stepping forward to say, we're going to look at the data, we're going to look at the information, your report, of being targeted with electronic weapons, and we are going to run a data analysis and we're going to speak out about it. So please step forward and assist and give your information if you are a TI and if you are being assaulted anywhere on planet Earth. Um, the information will be out tonight on my website, but it's already out on YouTube. Uh, there, is, um, there is a video, and perhaps I'll give all the link and he can put the video link uh, with this uh, with this video as well that's all thank, thank you. you thank you Ramola. we will link that and we'll also link eric carlstrom's uh, wonderful website on the situation i just want to draw your attention to the feeling in your heart and the feeling in your throat right now that's your humanity that's worth fighting for and I think that's what, that's where we have to move now. So uh, thank you, Crime Fighting Forum, Techno Crime Fighting Forum. It's been wonderful. It's always wonderful working with you. And we'll be back next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>